problem number four, which is a uh, which is 3230. It is a step-up transformer, and it is an ideal transformer. And I will come back to that several times. What I mean by that, I have a primary winding, whereby the driving EMF has a 121 volts RMS. And of course, it goes with cosine omega t. It has N1 windings. And on the secondary side, the secondary side, you'll see in a minute what I mean by that, I have E2 RMS, which is 15,600 volts, much higher. I have N2 windings, and I2 must be smaller or equal to 10 to the minus 2 amperes. If not, then a fuse will blow. What would a transformer like this look like? Well, they are made of sheets of iron, and these sheets have this shape. This is open. And the sheets are glued together, many of them. And the reason why that's done is to avoid eddy currents. And you'll learn about eddy currents later. Here is the primary winding. And so here is your E1, E01 cosine omega t. It's driving this, and it has N1 windings. And here is your secondary winding. There could be a resistor here, and there would be a voltmeter V2 here, and this has N2 windings. And this voltmeter would read E2, which is an induced EMF. I'll write for that E0, 2, cosine omega t. And I assume that the two are exactly in phase. The whole thing is a little bit simplified, and I would refer you to page 1014 if you want to read up on this in some more detail. Now I can do the closed loop integral of E dot dl, both in this loop and in this loop, Faraday's law. Kirchhoff's law is for the birds, it doesn't hold. Closed loop integral of E dot dl is not zero, but in the primary side it equals minus n1 times the magnetic flux derivative versus time. Now this phi, phi of b is only through the surface of one of these loops, through one of these staircase, spiral staircase surfaces. That's the way we define this phi of b. That's why we have an n1 here. And this equals e1, and that of course equals e01 times the cosine of omega t. Now we go to the second side. And when we go to the second side, the integral of E dot dl again is not zero. Again, Kirchhoff is law is for the birds, but now I get n2 times the same d phi b dt. And that, of course, equals my E2, which is E02 times cosine omega t. Why is it the same? Because we make the assumption, the simplification, that the magnetic field generated by this primary, which oscillates back and forth with omega omega, goes this way, this way, this way, this way, that it stays entirely inside this iron, which is a not an unreasonable approximation, so that it is B0 outside everywhere. So that would mean that the flux going through one of these open surfaces of one of these open staircase surfaces is the same as the one that goes through here, but since I have N2 windings here, I have an N2 here, and I only have an N1 there. Well, it follows then immediately uh, by taking the ratio of these two, that E2 divided by E1 equals N2 divided by N1. In an ideal case, this gives you enormous insight 
That means if you have a ratio of the windings of 1,000 to 1, you can step up the voltage by a factor of 1,000. In our particular case, this ratio is 130. So we step up the voltage by a factor of 130. Now how much power is now delivered to the secondary, uh, to the resistor in the secondary, if I2 has reached its maximum value of 10 to the minus 2 amperes? Well, keep in mind again that the mean power per cycle equals the voltage RMS of psi 2 times the current RMS at psi 2. And this now is the 15,600 times the 10 to the minus 2, so this is 156 watts. If the situation is ideal, which it almost never is, that means if there is no energy loss, if there is no heat loss, which is not true. If you put your hands on these transformers, they are warm, believe me. You can even burn your hands. In fact, sometimes the glue that is used to, to glue these, these sheets of metal together can even melt. But if you assume that there is no <laughs> energy loss, then of course this power of 156 watts must be delivered also by the primary side and therefore you get now for an ideal transformer the situation that V2, I2, RMS, RMS must be V1, I1, RMS, RMS and this is 156 watts and so you will have no problems to calculate that I1 RMS is 1.3 amperes. So you see now that the voltages step up in ratio N2 over N1, but the currents step down in ratio uh, N1 over N2. So the voltages are proportional to the number of windings, but the currents are inversely proportional to the windings in order to keep the power delivered to the left side the same as the power to the right side, because notice that this current here in one is substantially higher, is 130 times higher than the power, than the current in the secondary part number two.